Despite the looming threat of Kids WB, Fox Kids was still on a roll for their sixth season. And even with Disney replacing the entire ABC lineup, in which all but three shows would be replaced for the 97-98 season, we'll get to that. Nothing was stopping Fox Kids. They aired two shows in reruns from an acquired show. This was the season of the cancellation of The Tick. It also had the non-renewal of some of Fox Kids' most popular series as well, for political reasons. And it also saw the partnership of Fox Kids and Saban to make Fox Kids worldwide. The earliest article I found about this was November 1st, 1996. So the deal must have been finalized in October of 96. With the partnership, Fox Kids could now reach out to the international markets. Margaret Loesch would still be the head of Fox Kids, and Saban would supervise all Saban-related operations. Months after the partnership with Fox, Saban called Margaret Loesch and Chase Carey, the CEO and chairman of Fox Television, into a meeting and started talking about forming a network to compete with Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. Fox Kids Worldwide would buy the Family Channel in June of 1997 to form Fox Family in 1998. In July of 97, Margaret Loesch would be stripped of her title of head of Fox Kids and would leave the company that November. But these are stories for another time. Unfortunately, this is going to be short because there isn't that much to talk about Seabear and Jamal. You know it's a real shame that African-American lead characters or culture-centric children's programs that succeed in the U.S. or around the world, for that matter, are few and far between. I can only think of four series off the top of my head that featured African-American leads that were a success. There's Fat Albert, of course. And then there's Little Bill, The Proud Family, and Static Shock. And I can talk all day about Bill Cosby and what he has allegedly done, but that does not take away from what he has done for the community. Especially in Fat Albert. Now, I won't go into why shows like Wayne Head, Class of 3000, and The Boom Crew weren't a success, because I don't know why. Well, I know why The Boom Crew wasn't a success, because it was bad. But let's look into why Seabear and Jamal was and wasn't a success. Now, I know the series was on for three seasons, but it still only had 13 episodes, and all those episodes aired during the first season. For the second and third season, it aired on Friday mornings in reruns. For some reason, the Disney Afternoon Fox Kids and Kids WB had this fascination of airing shows on Fridays that usually weren't seen during the week. Twice! It only worked twice, with gargoyles and goosebumps. Now part of the reason why Fox kept Seabear around was probably to fulfill the EI requirements. That and actually reach out to a demographic that usually doesn't get reached out to. But with only 13 episodes, was it a bad show? Or did kids just not watch it? After all, 8 a.m. is kind of early. Let's find out. Well, to start off, Seabear is kind of a slow series. I'm watching an episode and it took 11 minutes for it to go anywhere. You could fit an entire episode of Adventure Time, Steven Universe, or Milo Murphy's Law into that time frame. It was a lot of talking and not much showing, up until they got to Seabear's fantasy part of the episode. Now let's talk about Seabear. He is probably my favorite characters in the series, and they use him for some of the sight gags and to help Jamal with his problem of the week. But for most of the episode, he's just in the background making little quips and jokes. And a lot of times, he doesn't need to be in the episode until they go into his fantasy world. Now there is the issue about how they promoted Seabear. In big words, featuring Tone Lock. Is it a problem? No. But the target audience isn't going to know the name. Heck, the target audience isn't going to know the name of any of the voice actors, professional or celebrity, in any cartoons until they at least get into their teens. Kids will watch Aladdin and think, Ha oh, Judy's funny. And not care that Robin Williams voiced him. It's not a horrible show by any means. And they try really hard with the story and telling jokes, but a lot of jokes fall flat, and the storytelling takes a long time to get anywhere. But they do insert some jokes that are just for adults. See Bear, where have you been? Playing doubles. That is funny. But by the time we get to that point, 
some of the adults might have already checked out of the episode, or considering how early Seabear came on, might still be in bed. The songs are fine, well, most of them anyway, and the background music is fine, with a few exceptions. Now, let me get a better look at you, son. What even is that? The animation is classic film Roman. The same company that did The Mask, Bobby's World, and the Mortal Kombat series. Well, according to a Daily News article from 1997, Fox Kids decided not to renew Seabear and Jamal, despite top ratings for its time slot. The assumption was Fox wanted to produce their own cartoons, something that Fox Kids could own and have the merchandising and international rights to. Which I guess makes sense. After all, this was kind of around the time Saban took over. But if that's the case, then why keep airing the show for two more years? Again, only the Fox executives would know that. Next time on the History of Fox Kids. Three typical average kids inside a haunted mansion. Just by chance, free to ghost to make them Beetle Boys. Big bad Beetle Boys. Big bad Beetle Boys. Hey, look now, they're superheroes armed with superpowers. Go. Taken from a comic strip and now they're Beetle Boys. Is this weird? Is this too weird? You need to sit down.